Hello everyone, welcome to Skein Spider. Today is part two of the Pokeball pattern. If you haven't seen part one, you'll have to go watch that first because that's where we did all our crocheting. Today's part two is just the assembly stage. So what we're going to do first is a little bit of prep work. In part one, I mentioned that I'm going to give you three closure options. We have the Velcro, the button, and the magnets. To do either of those requires doing different things at different stages, so there's different steps involved. So I'm going to be going over each at that stage, if, if that makes sense. Hopefully it will as we continue on. If you don't want to do any closures at all, you can skip that part entirely. But for this ball for me, I'm going to be using the button. I'm choosing to do this because I think it's slightly more difficult than the other two in that there's a couple of extra steps involved and I thought it would benefit people to see that being done in the video rather than these two which are a little bit simpler. So that's what I'm going to be using today but you can use any method or no method at all. The first thing we're going to be doing is preparing our bath bomb mould. Now mine came with these little things here but they're going to get in our way, so we need to get rid of those. This plastic is not very strong at all. It's fairly flimsy, so you should be able to cut these off with just a pair of scissors. Now that that's done, we're going to separate these into bottom and top pieces. If your pieces are the same size, which they are for me, that doesn't really matter, but I think I mentioned in part one that one of the previous bath bomb molds that I would bought one of the sides was actually slightly taller. So I used that for the bottom piece, but it doesn't really matter if your top or bottom piece is slightly taller. Though so these, just so you guys know, this bath bomb mold that I purchased was from Amazon. The one that I purchased where the bottom was a little bit taller or one piece was a little bit taller, I actually got that off eBay. So just be aware of the size of your bath bomb mold because you may need to adjust the pattern to fit that and I did go over how to do that in part one, so that's why you need to watch that first. But what we're going to do now is step number one for if you're using the magnet closure. If you are using magnets, and I have to be careful here because these ones are very strong. I don't know if you can see, but I actually dented my nail <laughs> because they snapped together when I didn't want them to and it dented it. Anyway, if you're using magnets, I think I'm also mentioning part one that you need them to be small enough that they can stick to your, your shell here but also strong enough that they'll fit through two, or stick together, I should say, that they'll stick together through two layers of crochet. So as you can see, these ones do that. So I know that they're okay to use. I'm going to put this one back over here so I don't injure my fingers anymore. But step one for the magnet is at this stage. So you're going to take your top piece of your shell, the plastic bath bomb mold, and you're going to glue that to the outside of the shell of the bath bomb mold. The exact positioning is going to depend on the top piece of your pokeball that we crocheted. So what you want to do is slide that over the top of your bath bomb mold. And again, this should be fairly tight. Getting there. Okay, so you can see where the black stitches are, where we've shaped the red. You want your magnet to sit underneath that. So I would glue it just to the edge of the bath bomb mold, like so. So that is step one if you're using a magnet. If you are using the Velcro, which I have here, you're going to take one of the pieces, so the soft side or the sticky side, it doesn't really matter which one, and you're going to either glue or sew. I would recommend sewing, it's a little bit stronger one piece to those exposed black stitches so at the front of your piece right in the middle here that's where we're going to sew that this is also so that's the velcro so that's step one for the velcro is to sew one side on and this also applies to the buttons so step one my button's a little bit big i'll have to get another one but you want to sew your button to the same spot that you would sew the velcro so in the center of the black stitches here so I swapped out my button for one that's a better size and this one is two centimeters which I think is what I recommended in the materials list in part one anyway so I should have listened to myself <laughs> but anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this on my black stitches for my top piece and I want 
black on black is a bit hard to see, isn't it? But you want the bottom of the button to rest just above the final round of stitches that you did. So I'm going to have my button about here. So I have thread my needle with some black yarn and then I'm just going to sew that on. And if you're using Velcro, you're going to be sewing that on in the exact same position. So at this point, you should either have a button or a piece of Velcro sewed on to your top piece or a magnet glued on to the top part of your bath bomb mold. When either of those things are done, we're then going to begin crocheting the shells together around our bath bomb mold. So I'm going to start with the top. In part one, I mentioned how I left one of these, so for me that's my top part, the yarn attached to the skein, I hadn't cut it. So I'm going to show you how to go from that to straight into crocheting the pieces together. However, with my bottom piece, I did cut the yarn. So I'm also going to be showing you how to start from this point. So you've cut the yarn, and then I'm going to show you how to rejoin it and then crochet it together around your bath bomb mold. First thing we're going to do is place our top piece of the bath bomb mold on a flat surface. And I actually find this easier to put on if you fold back your red stitches. So you're just working with the black stitches for now. You're going to slide that over the top of your bath bomb mold. Now keep in mind this is supposed to be a tight fit so you may have to push it down a little bit. This is also a good place to check that you have the right amount of stitches. You want the edge, very last round of your stitches to sit just over the edge of your bath bomb mold. If they sit up way too high you've got too many you need to take a couple of rows out or a couple of rounds out I should say and the same goes for your inside piece. You want about one round of stitches to sit above. Okay we've got our top piece on the outside and I've just put my inside piece on the inside and that seemed to fit together okay. Now what you're going to do is bring in about six stitch markers. You don't have to do this next step but I find it does make things a lot easier. So what we are going to do is just at random points around our, our piece or two pieces, we're just going to connect them with our stitch markers. This helps to prevent the pieces, well especially the outside piece from slipping away as you begin crocheting. Okay, they are together now. And I'm going to grab my three millimeter hook. I'm going to insert it into the last stitch of, was it round 28 I think I did. And then all you're going to do is first go into or under the front and back loop from the top piece, like so. And then you're going to go straight into the front and back loop of the inside piece. Which stitch number exactly you use, it doesn't matter because there should be 84 stitches in this piece, 84 stitches in the inside piece, and they are round pieces, so they're the same. So it doesn't matter the exact stitch, plates, stitch placement, but you're just going to go into whatever stitch is directly behind stitch number one here. So for me, it is this one here. And then all you're going to do is yarn over and pull through the front loops of both the ins or the front and back loops of the inside piece and the outside piece. And then just finish off your single crochet. And I'm just going to place my stitch marker there so I know that it's the end of my round. And you're going to repeat this all the way along. You're going to go into the next stitch of the outside piece into the next stitch of the inside piece and single crochet. Now if you find your work is stretching too much on the outside or if it's beginning to really bunch up on the inside that means you don't have the correct number of rounds in your work. So if the stitches are stretching too much on the outside or bunching up you've either got two more or too few. 
and the same goes for the inside as well. So you need to stop, take out your joining stitches and either add or remove a couple of rounds from whichever piece is giving you problems. And then you're going to have to repeat the process again. Put the inside piece in, outside piece on, hold them together and begin crocheting again. So I'm just going to continue this all the way around the Pokeball. Just going to pause to interrupt here for a moment. I forgot to mention that if you're using the magnet as a closure, before you single crochet the two pieces together, make sure that this exposed section of our black stitches is over the magnet. So you want the magnet, which would be under, under the outside shell that we crocheted, to be sitting roughly where either the button or the Velcro is sitting, but obviously underneath, so you won't be able to see it. So make sure you center that first and then single crochet the two pieces together. What I'm going to do at this point is because I didn't weave in this end, I'm actually going to line it up along the stitches and just work over it. And then when all the stitches are joined, we're just going to slip stitch back into the first one. And you're going to cut a short tail and then we're just going to weave that in with our needles. Now we can fold the red outer stitches down and we're going to sew those on later, but we're not going to do that just yet. Instead, we're going to grab our bottom pieces And then we're just going to repeat the process. So we're going to put the outer shell on first, stick in the inner shell. What I'm going to do with these pieces is show you how to attach the yarn if you have cut it. So you're going to go into one of your stitches from round 28, <laughs> round 28 of the top piece, so where the black stitches have ended. And again, it doesn't really matter which piece you go into. So you're going to insert your hook, grab your black yarn, line it up behind the stitch and then you're going to pull that yarn through and then slip stitch to join and this slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch in the round now at this point i'm just going to secure the end and i'm going to bring back in my stitch markers that i use to join the two pieces together for the top and i'm going to do the same with the bottom pieces here I'm just going to clip this piece together to keep it out of my way and stick that in there. And then all you're going to do is reinsert your hook. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the top piece. We're going to single crochet the outer and inner pieces together. So you're going to go into the stitch of the top piece first and then out of the corresponding stitch in the bottom piece and then just single crochet and I'm also working over these two ends as well. And then we're just going to slip stitch, cut a tail and weave that end in. Now we should have two pieces. We have our top piece complete and our bottom piece complete. Or I probably should say sewn together rather than complete because we've got one more step to do before they are complete. What we're going to do is take these tail ends we've left from the outer stitches. So not the black stitches, but either the red or the white. And if you've clipped them, just unclip them and then thread that end through your needle. And then what you want to do is press those stitches flat. And then we're going to sew those on. So you're going to sew all the way around. And then up across the top here 
and then back down to your starting point. And you're going to do that for both the top and then the bottom pieces. And then when you finish sewing both pieces, we're just going to weave this end in. And then we're just going to get rid of the excess yarn. Once the inner and outer piece of both halves are crocheted together, we're then going to join those two halves together. So what you're going to need for that is six stitch markers, your crochet hook, as well as your black yarn. And we're going to begin with the bottom one. What you're going to do here is, you're going to look at the piece from front on, and you're basically going to eyeball where the middle is, but at the back. So you want to roughly say, okay, this is the middle here. And then you want to try and get your first stitch marker in the center stitch at the back. So that's where I'm going to place that. So just eyeballing it again, and I think I need to move that over one. All right, that looks okay. And then what I'm going to do is bring in the top piece and I'm going to line that up with the bottom piece so that the two sides here of the rows that we worked, they line up. So you've got the red here and then the white here and they're in line. So holding that together, we're then going to turn our piece make sure that's still lined up and what you want to do is place the stitch marker in the corresponding stitch in the top piece so we have the one in the bottom piece here and you're just going to judge which stitch is sitting directly above that or as close to directly above it as you can get. So for me, that one is here. Oh, there we go. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, it doesn't want to go. There we go. Okay. So once those two are in, what I want you to do is pinch them and hold them tightly together. And you're going to turn your pokeball back around. And you just want to make sure that everything is still lined up. So the front is lined up. If I try not to move it. The back is lined up too. Once the two stitch markers in the center back are in, we can take our pieces apart. And then what you're going to do is starting with one, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to count out from the stitch markers, both to the right and to the left for eight stitches. I'm going to be calling this zero just for simplicity's sake. So you're going to count out eight. We're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then in the eighth stitch, we're going to place our stitch marker. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then what I'm calling zero at the moment, which will give us nine in total. And then we're going to do the same in the other direction. So we've got zero where we've marked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So all up, we should have 17 stitches marked out. We've got eight here, eight here, and one in the center. And then you're going to repeat that process on the other half. When that's done, we're just going to do another quick check to make sure everything lines up. So take your top half, place it on the bottom half and make sure your front is in line. Flip it over and make sure that those stitches match up. If they all line up correctly, then you're good to go. And we're going to start off with the bottom piece. You want to place it down on whatever surface you're working with, with the front 
facing away from you, so it's pointing towards the back here. You're going to grab your hook, bring in your black yarn, and then we are going to insert our hooks through the stitch that is on the right of us at this point. So the furthest one to the right. Just to make sure I don't lose which one that is. And you're inserting your hook from the outside to the inside, like this. Once that's done, bring in your black yarn and you're going to line it up behind your crochet hook. And you want to leave a tail that's long enough that you can either weave it in or work over it at this point. You're going to yarn over and pull that yarn through the stitch and then slip stitch to join. This slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch as we're working. So we're going to go straight back into that same stitch and single crochet. Wow, my hook is being really squeaky today. Hang on, let me clean it. See if that makes a difference. Anyway, so that's one single crochet. What we're going to do at this point is continue single crocheting to our last stitch marker. So that should be 17 single crochet in total. And at this point you can take out the middle one because we don't really need it to mark our position anymore. So I'm going to continue crocheting. And then I'm just going to cut this tail end I worked over. Get rid of that. Once you've done your 17 single crochet across, we're going to chain one and then turn our work. At this point, because we've turned, the front of the Pokeball is now pointing towards us rather than away from us. And we're going to bring in our top half. Starting with the stitch marker that's on the right again, so this one here, and once more I'm going to take out the middle one because I don't need that any longer. We are going to join the two pieces together. So you're going to bring the front po pokeball in nice and close. To begin, first go into what was stitch 17 or single crochet 17 from the row we just did. So I've gone through both the back, whoops, now I haven't. There we go. I've gone under the back and front loop of that. And then from there, we're going to go straight into this first stitch from the top half of our Pokeball. So that is the stitch that is furthest to the right. You're going to hold those together as closely as you can. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through both stitches. So you're pulling through both the stitch of the top Pokeball and you're pulling through the stitch from the row that we've just done. Once that's finished, yarn over and pull through again to complete a single crochet. There we go. And then we're just going to repeat this all the way along for 17 single crochet or until we reach the opposite stitch marker. So once more you're going into the row that we've previously done and then into the next stitch of the top of the Pokeball and we're going to single crochet. Now because we're working with, or if you're working with the bath bomb molds, you may need to maneuver your work a little bit to get the hook in right because the harder surface of those bath bomb molds can make trying to crochet a little bit of a pain. But just take your time and <laughs> we will get there eventually. Number three. When you've finished all 17 single crochet, we're going to cut a tail. Now at this point, I like to cut a fairly long tail because I like to weave this end in back across the stitches and then back around one of the Pokeballs. The reason I'm doing a, so much weaving in is because as you move the Pokeball, this end can come a little bit loose. So I like to make sure that it's nice and secure. And I do that by going all the way back here and then probably about a third to halfway around one of the Pokeball halves. So I'm just going to cut a tail, pull up with my hook, and then with my needle threaded I'm just going to go through the backs of my stitches here, 
and then I'm going to go back in the opposite direction into the backs of the stitches of the joining round that we did to join the inner and outer halves together. All right, I'm just going to snip that tail. And then that is the Pokeball part finished. We're just going to finish off the center pieces and then we're going to be done. So we're going to start off with the easy part. We're going to take our small center piece and you just want to sew that to one of your large ones. So we did have 18 single crochet in the last round. So you want to sew that to here where there's 18 single crochet which would be between rounds three and four of the large piece and then when you finish sewing the smaller piece on we're just going to weave the end through the backs of the stitches here and then I'm just going to tie it off because it doesn't matter if this side is a little bit messy because it's going to be closed up and no one will see it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just with both of my large pieces, I'm going to take these ends that we've left and I'm going to weave those through the backs of the stitches too. When you're done weaving in those two ends, we're then going to go on to the assembly stage. Now this is going to be a little bit different depending on what closure you're using. If you're using a magnet, first grab your magnet and you're going to place it against the one that is glued down to your bath bomb mold, so under the crochet. And then you're going to double check that your magnet is snapping together so you get that closure. When you do, you're going to glue your magnet to the front piece. So where we sewed the smaller center piece, that's the front. You're going to glue your magnet to that. And again, just make sure that your magnet is sticking. You don't want to accidentally glue it on the wrong side and you know, repel your magnets. You don't want that. So just double check as you, as you go. If you're using Velcro, what you're going to do is take your back piece, so this piece here, and you're going to sew the other part of your Velcro on to the right sides of your stitches. So the wrong side is where we weaved the tail ends in. You're going to sew your Velcro to the right side. And then for the button closure, I'm going to go through that with you now because it's a little bit different than the other two. So for this next part, and this applies to if you're using both the magnet and the Velcro as well, you're going to grab your black yarn and your three millimeter hook and we're going to begin joining the pieces together. For both the magnet and the Velcro, which you should have attached to either piece, so the magnet to the front piece or the Velcro to the back piece, you're going to place these two pieces together with the wrong sides of the stitches together. So the right sides are on this side and on that side, so facing outward. And you're simply going to single crochet these two pieces together. For the button closure, we are doing something similar, but before we single crochet the two pieces together, we're actually going to fold our back piece here in half. Now, each of the last pieces had 30 stitches in their final round. So when we fold this in half, we're going to be reducing it down to half, which is 15 stitches. So once again, from this point, if you're using the magnet, which should be on this side or the Velcro on this side, you're just going to place the circles together like that and you're going to single crochet them together. If you're using the button closure like I am, you're going to take your back piece and fold it in half. We're then going to place our pieces together. So whether that's your folded in half piece or the full piece, like so. And then we're going to take our crochet hooks and insert them into a stitch in the round of the front piece. So again, this is my front piece here. This is my piece at the back. So I'm inserting my hook into the front piece. Which stitch you go into, it doesn't really matter too much, but I like to have it down the bottom because that's where we're going to be sewing the centerpiece to the Pokeball. So I'd like to start down the bottom. We're going to bring in our black yarn. And then we're just going to, oh, we're going to pull it through. Come on, a bit tangled there. 
and slip stitch to join like we've joined previously in the pokeball and our first single crochet is going to be back into this stitch now if you have the magnet or the velcro you should be going through both the stitch in the front of the centerpiece so the front piece and then straight out the back centerpiece at this point you're going to single crochet and then you're going to continue all the way around single crocheting the pieces together now for me because i'm doing the button closure and i am folding this piece in half i'm going to single crochet for seven stitches here I also need to mention that if you slip stitch to finish off your pieces, the slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch in a round, so you need to skip over that, which is what I've done here. So this is the start slash end of my round, and the slip stitch was here, and I've just skipped straight over that. So I'm going to continue doing seven single crochet, three, and seven. And it's at this point that I'm going to bring in my other half for my button closure. So I'm going to line that up behind the front part. So I'm matching the curve, the flat, flat side is in the center here. And it is the same as joining the, the flat circle together, except we're going to go through three stitches at this point rather than just two. So you want to go into the stitch of the front piece and then what we want to do is go through the stitch of the first half. So this, if you can see, let's make sure that's nice and centered. The first half of the fold, you want to go through the first stitch of the first half of the fold, which if you can see is here. So I'm going through the front half of this fold. There we go. So front half of the fold, and then I'm going to go straight out the first stitch at the back half of the fold. So let me bring this in nice and close so you can see, hopefully. So I've gone through, this is the front piece here, I've gone through the first stitch. I've gone through the two end stitches of the second piece, but the first one is at the front, so it's part of this section here. And the second one is at the back, so it's part of this section here. Once I've gone through all three, I'm then going to just squash that together so it's nice and tight. And I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through, and I'm going to pull through all three of those stitches. Once I've done that, I'm then going to finish my single crochet. And then I'm going to repeat the process again. So you want to go into the stitch from the front piece into the stitch from the first half of the folded piece and then out of the next stitch in the back half of the folded piece so yarn over pull through all three and then single crochet and you're going to repeat that 15 times in total because when we folded this piece in half that reduced us down from 30 stitches to 15. so that was two we're going to continue on with three And then once you've done that 15th joining single crochet, we're just going to finish off the round with eight single crochet. And eight. We're going to slip stitch to finish off and you'll need to leave a tail for sewing. The final thing that we need to do is to sew our centerpiece to the pokeball. Now we sew it down the bottom here, so we're only sewing on half. But what you want to do before that is line your piece up, your centerpiece, with whatever closure you're using. So if you've got Velcro or a magnet, you're going to stick those together. And then wherever that lines up, that's where you're going to sew that on. But for me, this little pocket that we've created at the back should hook over the button now i just tested mine and i put my button a little bit too high so what i'm going to do later on i'm just going to move that down a little bit so i'll just cut this yarn and i'll re-sew that on but for now i know where it's going to sit roughly so i'm just going to place that there and i'm just going to sew the bottom half of the centerpiece to the pokeball so i'm going to go up this side 
across the middle and then back down. And when that's sewn on, our Pokeball is all finished. I just need to take a moment to move my button because it's in the wrong position. But other than that, we're done. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this pattern, consider subscribing, and I'll be back next week with a new one. <laughs>